Hello fishing enthusiasts, welcome back to another episode of Fish O'Clock. If you're new here, please remember to hit the like and subscribe button so you can get notified the next time I post a video. So for today's episode, I'm gonna be doing a sonar experiment. I've got a clear plastic container and I'm gonna be catching multiple different species of fish and fish of different sizes. I am then going to take those fish and submerge them on the bottom of the lake inside of that container and drive my boat over the top of that container and take two different sonar readings, traditional and down imaging. The point in all of this is to be able to answer two age old questions. One, can you determine the species of fish by just looking at the sonar images? Two, can you determine the weight of the fish? So let's get into it. It's fish. Okay, so before we begin, as a disclaimer, no fish were harmed during this experiment. All fish that were caught were returned in the water that they were caught. So let's get into the setup. First, I need to find a suitable container to hold the fish. For this, I use a cheap bin from Walmart because the thin plastic will have the least amount of impact on the sonar return. I will need to be able to sink the plastic bin and pull it back up, so I'll be using a fitness weight to anchor the bin in place and prevent it from moving during the experiment. I will also need to find a good location in the lake, somewhere deep enough to get an accurate sonar reading. Once I have all that figured out, I'll be setting my settings on manual to ensure all variables which impact the sonar readings remain constant. Prior to running the experiment, I'm going to be sinking the bin in the water and driving over the bin with no fish in it, just to make sure that the bin isn't too impactful on the sonar return. So I found a nice little rocky ledge here on the west side of the lake. I'm going to be throwing some soft yeah. plastics right next to this dock right here and see what we catch. Go for it, boy. And right off the bat, I catch one. Very fast, very easy. Grab the net, grab the net. Uh, looks like it's a smaller bass, not bad. Not no, bad it's all. a good size. He's small. Take a quick measurement, he's 14 inches long, which is roughly that about a pound. Down, okay. Now I go ahead and take him over to our spot here, and I submerge my bucket, and then we pour him in the bucket, close the lid, and down he goes. Okay. <laughs> so we've got a camera inside of the bucket just kind of seeing what, what's going on. Um, if he's at the bottom or at the top, he seems to be staying near the top of the bucket. Uh, we do a few laps and drive over those buoys just to get the best sonar picture. So when you look at the traditional sonar image, you can see that the image was taken over a soft bottom and 17 feet of water. The bass is represented here as this fish arch slightly suspended above the bottom of the lake. You can see that the arch contains some dark red, which indicates a strong return. The arch is also uh, very equal in proportions. This is the fish arch that I would expect to see for a bass. So when we look at the downscan image, we actually see the fish itself is represented on downscan. It's just almost like a little dot. Like if you take a ballpoint pen and press it against paper, um, that's about the size of the fish on downscan. It's perfectly circular and it has that strong return, that yellowish strong return in the center. So this is exactly what we'd want to see if we were looking for largemouth bass on downscan. Okay, so now we'll go over to the side imaging. And actually, this was surprising to me. I thought we would actually be able to see more. But if you look, you'll see that there is a darker spot on the screen. I'll zoom in here. If you had no idea that that was actually a bass, that would be really hard to distinguish from, say, a rock or from some sort of depression in the floor of the lake. And after our scans, we release the bass unharmed back goes. into the He's water. Out. So I'm out fishing at Inks Lake with my son, and it's sundown. 
I come across this large school of fish on my fish finder. Throw a spoon down right below the boat and it pretty much hits right away. Um, and I know it's something big, so I pull her in and this whole time I'm thinking, this has got to be a white bass, but then as I start feeling it, it feels a lot heavier than a white bass. So we quickly measure him and he measures about 17 inches. So this catfish is probably about two or three pounds. Not huge, but not small either. It's a great specimen for our test, that's for sure. So when we interpret our traditional sonar images for the catfish, you'll see, you'll notice a few things about this particular image. The sonar marking itself is a lot thicker and it's got a very strong red return and it's also a lot flatter and you can see if we go back to the bass image compare that to the catfish you'll see the catfish is a lot flatter it's a lot thicker and the bass is a more pronounced arch than the catfish it's also a lot thinner the catfish also appears to skew to one side versus the bass, which does not appear to have any kind of skew. So as interesting as it is, there are some similarities and also some differences between the images when comparing two species of fish, the bass and the catfish, using traditional sonar. So what do you guys think? Is there enough here to be able to tell this is a catfish? I don't think so. But let's keep going with the experiment to see what else we can find. Now, if we interpret the down imaging results here, we can see, again, it's just a very thick circle. More interesting, though, is when we compare the bass down imaging with the catfish down imaging. I noticed two things. One, the catfish results were much more pronounced. The size of the circle is closer to that of, say, a marker than the bass, which was more of the size of a ballpoint pin. The uh, intensity of the return is also much higher uh, for catfish than the bass. The last thing I noticed was the depth of the catfish uh, appeared to be, catfish appeared to be deeper and closer towards the bottom versus the bass, which was more suspended towards the top of the container. So now let's look at the side imaging. And if you look to the left, there's a circular-like shadow. That's gonna be the catfish. Interesting enough though, when we compare the bass and the catfish, the bass appears to have a much higher, taller, and more narrow shadow than the catfish, which appears to have a wider and a smaller shadow. And that might just have to do with where the bass was located in the container, with it being higher up in the water column versus the catfish, which was closer to the bottom. Got one. So it's sundown and I see a large school of white bass. I throw a, a small it right next to the boat. Uh, flutter spoon and immediately catch one. Is that a gar? It's not a big white bass, but it's still about it the is, average size for white like bass in this body of water. Inches. Mm -hmm. I sink my container with the white bass in it. Now, if you look at the 2D sonar reading, you'll notice that it's kind of a half arch. So because the white bass situated itself near the fitness weight, there was a little bit of interference between the signals. So this might not be the best example of white bass on 2D sonar. Um, but I did clean that picture up just a little bit. And when we compare white bass to the other species, we can see catfish has a very thick and long signal versus largemouth bass, which is a very pronounced arch. 
and then the white bass has more like half of a fish arch. Now looking at the uh, down scan, uh, this actually is kind of useful because the white bass is a weaker return than both the catfish and largemouth bass. So you can see the white bass is only blue in color, which is using this color palette is much weaker. The cat, both, both the catfish and largemouth bass contain that yellow color that is a strong return. So in this case, it looks like you might be able to use downscan to differentiate between a white bass and say a catfish or a coral. And finally going back to the side scan, again this view has not been very useful to me. There is no way to distinguish between uh, whether or not the white bass is a white bass or a large mouth bass, it's just a shadow. Okay, last but not least, bluegill. So I've got my little bait caster and I've thrown a live worm on it. On the fish finder, I noticed there are some smaller fish. So I go ahead and set my setting so I can see my weight. Oh. Yeah. Um, drop it down and it pretty much, the bluegill grabs oh. it right away. Um, it's definitely a small little bluegill. Um, but yeah, perfect specimen for this test. Uh, get a measurement on him, he's about eight inches long. So when we interpret the traditional sonar image, it's a very thin, dark red line with very soft return around it. When you compare it to the other fish, you'll notice uh, it's the other fish are a lot thicker. They're a lot thicker of a return. They're also a lot darker red. So the bluegill has that bright red, which is not quite as strong of a return as the dark red using this color palette. So when we look at down imaging, it's just a very bright, tiny little dot. And there's even other fish on this image. So you can see the comparison between that little tiny dot and those other larger dots. So that brings me back to the comparison between all of the species. So bluegill appears to have just one tiny little bright dot, while as white bass is just the uh, lowest return, but it's a larger dot. And then catfish, which is the strongest and largest circle there. And then next comes the largemouth bass. Okay, so let's wrap this up. So I've caught four different species of fish, largemouth bass, white bass, bluegill, and catfish. We've compared the individual sonar images, both in downscan and traditional. Now hopefully we have all the information we need to answer the two questions that we started the video with. So if we go back, the first question is, can we use traditional sonar images to determine the species of the fish? So I'm gonna go ahead and say no. While there are some similarities and differences between the species, there isn't enough difference between the sonar images to be able to distinguish, say, a catfish from a largemouth bass. There's a few hard and fast rules that might help you determine what species that is, such as looking at how thick the fish arch is and if it's elongated like the catfish or if it's more pronounced like the largemouth bass. That might be a good clue to determine what species of fish that is, but it's just not enough information to make that decision alone. Now, if we go back to the second question, which is, can sonar images be used to determine the size of the fish? Again, I am going to say no all around for this. Um, you can see that smaller fish from a traditional sonar standpoint were represented as a similar size. While the fish arch may not have been quite as thick, it certainly was similar enough to where it was too hard to distinguish between them. All right, so that concludes this video. If you guys liked this at all, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. I really appreciate all of this. This was a lot of work. It's been in the triple digits out here in Texas. I spent probably 80 or so hours 
in 100 plus degree weather filming this. It was very brutal. So I hope you guys derived value out of this. Please remember to hit that like and subscribe. Y'all take care and see y'all in the next one.